Hello, and welcome to today's lecture on, 5 simple questions, selecting the correct problem solving technique. A sub-module of the Define phase. Created by Lean Six Sigma Pro. A company dedicated to offering high quality free online Lean Six Sigma training modules. In part 1 of this sub-module, we will discuss 5 common problem solving techniques and the questions to ask when selecting which technique to apply to a particular problem. In this sub-module you will learn what technique to apply, when to implement, and why to implement this technique versus another. Agenda This module is divided into two parts. In part 1, we will review 5 problem solving methods. 1. Introduction to Lean Six Sigma 2. Introduction to Kaizen 3. Introduction to SMED 4. Introduction to Root Cause Analysis 5. The concept of just do it. In part 2, we will review the 5 main questions to ask, selecting the correct problem solving method 1. Problem example, 2. Flow chart, project selection. Problem solving. In our daily working life, we are faced with many production problems, such as, not meeting production quotas, personnel issues, people calling in sick or people not showing up for work, equipment failures, lack of parts or materials to complete the job, process failures, long change over times between processes, defects leading to waste or rework, safety issues and incidents, failed key process indicators such as not meeting efficiency, productivity, or OEE goals. When we finally find the time and resources to solve these problems a new problem arises, with so many problem solving techniques available, how do you know which one to select? Lean Six Sigma Kaizen Single Minute Exchange of Dai, SMED Route Cause Analysis, RCA Or, Just Do It In this lecture, we will discuss four basic problem solving techniques, Lean Six Sigma, Kaizen, SMED, and Root Cause Analysis. Plus, Just Do It Which is not a problem solving technique but rather the act of just fixing a problem, in order to assist you in knowing which technique to apply we have created a project type selection matrix. This matrix reviews the six criteria of these continuous improvement techniques. The six criteria are 1. Cause, common or special. 2. Factors, the number of inputs, X's, that induce a change in the output, Y. 3. Solution, known or unknown and whether it is simple easy to implement, or complex, harder to implement. 4. Project length. 5. Team size. 6. Financial impact. Lean Six Sigma. Definition, continuous improvement technique implemented to significantly reduce the total number of defects, called waste, of a process. Typically implemented as a key initiative for the company. When to implement. Cause, common, not assignable, we cannot determine the cause of common cause as there are many inputs that work in synergy to bring about the output, Y. Factors, multiple inputs, X's. Solutions, solutions are unknown, both complex and simple. Project length, 6 months. Team size, 6 to 8 people. Financial savings, $250,000 to $1 million. Why implement, leads to significant improvements in the quality of the product leading to improved customer satisfaction. Examples. Reducing the number of bottle rejects on line A. Improving the process capability of a line. Improving the value stream of a process. Here is a filler process problem. The problem statement reads, Problem Statement, 25% of Chiara and Bella's strawberry cookie dough ice cream are being rejected by the checkwear due to high and low weight resulting in significant material usage variance on line 5. Historical data from the past 6 months, shows this to be a consistent loss rate for this product. There is no significant difference due to shift in the loss rate. This is a top loss for the company as this is our most popular product and consists of 45% of the demand. 
let's review the criteria for Lean Six Sigma in order to determine if this is the correct continuous improvement technique to apply to solve this problem. Is this a key initiative for the company? Yes, this is a top loss for the company as this is our most popular product and consists of 45% of the demand. Criteria 1. Cause, Common Yes, this problem is due to common cause. It is not a one-time event. Reviewing historical data from the past six months, shows that for this product, the company loses approximately 25% of their units, one out of every four cans, due to both high and low rejects. 2. Factors, multiple. Yes, the factors or inputs that have an impact on the low and high weights are many, including, variegates, inclusions, possible overrun, etc. 3. Solution, complex and simple, yes, this will have both complex solutions requiring that use of a possible full factorial or fractional factorial design of experiments test to establish the best settings for the process inputs. Solutions are unknown and require significant analysis in order to determine the root causes. Also, see 5 questions, in part 2 of this sub-module. Since the problem fits the criteria for Lean Six Sigma, is a key initiative, and fits the five basic questions, this is a good example of when to apply Lean Six Sigma to solve a problem. Welcome, to this short clip on Lean Six Sigma by Lean Six Sigma Pro. In this clip we will look at the type of problem solved using Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma uses a five-step MAIC process as the backbone of its continuous improvement projects. MAIC stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. The Define phase is about understanding the customer's expectations VOC and starting the project. In the Measure phase, we measure the voice of the process. VOP at the Gamba. In the Analyze phase, we identify the difference between the VOP to the VOC and identify the important inputs, X's, that have an impact on this difference. In the Improve phase, we identify and implement solutions. And, in the Control phase we standardize and replicate the significant twins of this project to other lines and areas. Lean Six Sigma is customer focused makes significant step change improvements in reducing process defects resulting in significant savings. Here is Bob at the Gamba he has just been hired by Energy Life to improve the process capability on Energy Life tomato powder drink mix manufactured online too. Problem Statement Since the 3rd of May 2014, when Energy Life started producing Energy Life powdered tomato drink online too filling, 35% of the cans are rejected due to high weights. The number of rejects are consistent throughout the run and occurs during every shift. Therefore, for every 10 cans produced approximately 4 cans are rejected for high weights. In the measure phase, Bob performs process capability. He sees that the process is, 1 based on the current sample, the process variance exceeds the customer's expectations. In other words, the range of the process exceeds the range between the upper and lower specification limits. 2. The process hugs the upper specification limit. The weight of most of the cans are at or around the maximum acceptable weight. During the analyze phase, Bob and his team identify and prioritize all of the important inputs, X's, that are having an impact on the output, Y which is the weight of the can. After implementing the solutions during the improve phase, the new process is, one process variance of the new process fits well within the customer's expectations. The weight of each can measured, fall within the upper and lower specification limits. 2. The process hugs the target. The mean weight of the sample is approximately equal to the target weight. Let's review, based on the problem statement. Does this problem fit the criteria for a Lean Six Sigma project? Factors multiple, check, there are multiple factors, inputs, that impact the process capability of a process, why? Such as, product density, initial ingredient weights, etc. Cause, common, check, the process continues to produce approximately the same number of defects run to run, roughly 35% solutions. 
simple and complex, check, improving process capability requires a significant process change in order to shift the mean or decrease variability, often, requiring DOE, and other inferential statistical tests, such as, regression analysis, hypothesis testing, for example, ANOVA, or Moods Median Test, and many others. This concludes this short video on Lean Six Sigma. Please join us at www.l6sigmapro.com for full-length modules on this topic. Kaizen Definition is continuous improvement technique that is focused on implementing quick, tangible, step changes in the process. In this project the team gets together for a 3-5 to five day Kaizen event known as a Kaizen Blitz. When to implement Cause, common Factors, one or more Solutions, simple and complex, unknown Project length, 3-5 to five day blitz, 2 months to implement Team size, 6-8 to eight people Financial savings, $15,000 to $250,000 Why implement, quick tangible results leading to financial gains Examples Reduce inventory levels at site A. Optimize layout of work area. Reduce excess inventory of parts through implementing Kanban system. In this slide, we see a crushed barrel problem occurring in the warehouse. The problem statement reads. On the 14th of March 2013, an internal quality audit on finished product inventory found 54 barrels of product R and 63 barrels of product B damaged from compression. The damaged barrels were stacked in clear violation. Stephanie Mayers led a root cause analysis and found the route cause to be lack of storage space. This project has been escalated to a Kaizen event aimed at optimizing inventory levels. Let's review the criteria for Kaizen in order to determine if this is the correct continuous improvement technique to apply to solve this problem. Is this intended to be a rapid, quick continuous improvement? When to implement? 1. Cause, common cause. Yes, this problem is due to common cause. Although, the problem was originally thought to have been caused by a one-time event. After completing route cause analysis, it was determined that the problem was actually caused by a lack of storage space. 2. Factors, multiple, yes, there are many entire related factors to consider when analyzing this problem. These may include, total inventory moving through the warehouse, seasonality versus demand, etc. 3. Solutions, simple and complex, and unknown. Yes, the solutions are both simple and complex and unknown. We are aware that we need to optimize inventory levels but we don't know how we will go about doing this yet. Therefore, the solutions are unknown. Please also review 5 questions, in part 2 of this sub-module. Since this project is intended to be a quick, rapid continuous improvement, the problem fits the criteria, and the 5 questions, this is a good example of when to apply Kaizen. It is important to point out, that Stephanie Mayers performed the correct actions by implementing a root cause analysis first to identify if this problem was due to special cause. And, then again when she escalated the problem into a project to optimize inventory levels. Welcome, in this clip, we will look at a problem solved using the Kaizen methodology. For a full module on this topic please visit www.l6sigmapro.com. Kaizen is customer focused, aimed at reducing waste in the value stream, focused on continuous improvement, resulting in significant savings. Kaizen is like a minid make, except there are no toll gates, team meets during the analyze phase at a Kaizen Blitz, 3-5 to five day event, and improvements and savings are smaller. Kaizen example, problem statement. Since January 3, 2014, when Line 4 was introduced into the production stream, material handling system is insufficient at transporting finished product from palletizing to shipping in a reasonable amount of time resulting in excessive inventory remaining on the production floor. 
the excessive inventory is creating cramped corners resulting in safety issues and destruction of finished goods. Current material handling system, transport of pallets by forklift to shipping dock. Since January 3, 2014, the last six months, we have had 11 incidents of damaged product resulting in a cost of $658,000. At the Gamba, we observe the problem. The excessive inventory is resulting in safety and quality issues. Team investigates solutions. Three more lines are soon to enter into production increasing the already severe issue on the floor. A new transport system is required. It is the only solution. Solution. Eliminated excess inventory on the floor by installing an automatic conveyor system from the palletizer to the shipping dock spent $150,000. A total cost avoidance $508,000. After six months the team has implemented a creative solution. The solution provides many benefits, eliminating several of the eight types of waste, defects, transportation, motion, overprocessing, waiting, and, increases safety and ergonomics. Based on the problem statement, does this problem fit the criteria for a Kaizen project? Cause, common, check. This problem is due to increased production from line 3 and will be increased once the other lines are added. It is not due to a one-time event, factors, one or more, check. This problem is due to at least one factor, amount of units produced as well as, manual process to transport product from the production floor, other, solutions, simple and complex. Check. The solutions to this problem will be both simple and complex. It is a good example for Kaizen. This concludes this short video on Kaizen. Join us at www.l6 Sigma Pro for a full length program on Kaizen implementation. SMED, Single Minute Exchange of Dai. Definition, a continuous improvement technique aimed at elimination or reduction of non-value-added activities during the changeover process by converting internal activities to external activities. Internal activities are those activities that must be completed while the machine is down. Such as, changing conveyor belts, external activities are those that can be done while the machine is running, such as, gathering items, materials, and tools. It is also about decreasing the time it takes to perform internal activities by implementing poker yokes and other time savings devices. When to implement. Cause, common. Factors, multiple. Solutions, simple and complex. Project length, approximately 3 months. Team size, 6 to 8 people. Financial savings, $5,000 to $25,000, savings from labor reduction. Why implement? Implementing SMED has a significant impact on the productivity of the process. A SMED project focuses on removing non-value-added activities in the changeover process allowing for quicker changeovers and ability to accommodate an increase in product diversity. Examples Reduction of setup time for product A Reduction of cleaning times between changeovers from product A to product B. Reduction of shutdown time at end of shift. In this slide, we have a problem due to long changeovers. The problem statement reads. Line 1 is running at full capacity. And, long changeover times is limiting the amount of product we can produce in a 72 hour period. The last six months of historical data, shows the average to be 12 hours with a benchmark of 8.5. While another line in the same plant, with the same product mix is able to complete a changeover in 4 hours. Let's review the criteria for SMED in order to determine if this is the correct continuous improvement technique to apply to solve this problem. Is this problem aimed at reducing changeover times? Criteria 1. Cause common. Yes, this problem is due to common cause. It is not a one-time event. The last six months of historical data, shows the average to be 12 hours with a benchmark of 8.5. 2. Factors, multiple. Yes, the factors or inputs that have an impact on the total change over time are many. 
In our example, we have two lines that produce the same product mix. One line takes 12 hours and the other 4 hours for the same changeover process. This is a significant time difference. During the measure phase of this project, we will capture the activities and times for both lines for comparison. 3. Solution, unknown, simple and complex. Yes, this will have both simple and complex solutions. And, the solutions are unknown. Also, see 5 questions, in part 2 of this sub-module. Since this project is intended to reduce change over time, the problem fits the criteria, and the 5 questions, this is a good example of when to apply SMED. Welcome to this short video clip on SMED, single minute exchange of dye. For a full module on this topic, please visit our website at www.l6sigmapro.com. Single minute exchange of dye, SMED, is a continuous improvement technique, aimed at elimination or reduction of non-value added activities during the changeover process. The changeover time starts from the production of the last good unit and ends when the first good unit of the next order is produced at full speed. It consists of three main subcomponents. 1. Shut down, all the activities to prepare the machine for cleaning. May also be referred to as end of run activities. 2. Cleaning, all of the activities essential to protect the next product from cross contamination. And, 3. Startup all of the activities to prepare for the next run. In a SMED, we categorize activities into two main types, 1. Internal activities 2. External activities, internal activities, activities that must be completed when the machine is down for the safety of the operator, equipment, or product. These activities happen in the danger zone. External activities are changeover activities that can be completed while the machine is in a run state without causing harm to the operator, equipment or product. The filling process is an example of an internal process. During changeover we will remove and clean the filler heads. Prior to startup, we will replace and adjust the head alignment. We will also remove and clean the conveyor belt and the area underneath. Prior to setup, we will replace the belt and align the conveyor to ensure proper fill level cup to cup. For example, Jane can only wash the airplane, internal activity, when the plane is not running. Otherwise, such an activity performed while the plane is running would endanger Jane's life. In a SMED project, the team decreases change over time by 1. Eliminating non-value added activities, 2. Converting internal activities into external activities 3. Decreasing the time it takes to complete external activities, implementing poker yokes and time-saving mechanisms. 4. Standardizing work methods. The last slides will show the changeover process. In this scene, we see two lines in the run state. On line 2, the changeover will begin when the last can has exited the conveyor. All of the activities performed to shut down, clean, and start up for the next run will be analyzed for improvements opportunities during the measure phase of the SMED project. Shutdown activities, include, emptying of pipes, removal of waste, disassembling of machine parts, removal of equipment, and returning unused items to inventory. Cleaning activities, include, cleaning food and waste from the equipment floors, and machine parts, disassembling of parts in order to clean them, sterilizing equipment, and finally all of the setup activities to get the line back up to a run state. Including, setting machine parameters, starting the line and making fine adjustments for nominal speed. This concludes this video on SMED introduction. If you would like to learn more about SMED, please, Join us at www.l6sigmapro.com and enroll in our free online SMED program. Route Cause Analysis Definition, is continuous improvement technique that is used to solve an operational or mechanical failure that is caused by a special cause, one-time event, or repeater. When to implement Cause, special cause, an assignable cause, we can assign this event to a route cause. This is not due to normal or common cause variation in the process. But, 
something outside of the ordinary that is inducing a change in the output Y. Factors, one or more. Solutions, unknown and simple. Project length, one to two days, the time to complete the project can range from one hour to two days depending on complexity and ease of root cause identification and corrective action and preventative action implementation. Team size, four to six people. Financial savings, varied. Why implement, RCA uses basic tools to solve for root cause, brainstorming, fishbone, 5Y. This leads to quick identification of root causes and solutions to eradicate the problem so that it does not repeat in the future. Examples Process failure resulting in excessive jams. Broken equipment part leading to downtime. Higher than normal material usage variance. In this slide, we see a problem related to a miscapping event. The problem statement reads, on the 4th of May 2014, a miscapping event occurred on C-shift resulting in 546 bottle rejects and 35 minutes of downtime. This is a one-time occurrence. Stephanie Mayers was the filler operator on staff during the time of the event. Let's review the criteria for root cause analysis in order to determine if this is the correct continuous improvement technique to apply to solve this problem. Is this problem due to an operational or mechanical failure that is caused by a special cause? 1x event, or repeater. When to implement. 1. Cause, special cause, assignable. This is a special cause, one-time event. 2. Factors, x, one or more. Yes, this is at least due to one or more factors. 3. Solutions, simple and unknown. The solutions to the problem are unknown, as we don't know why the miscapping occurred yet. Based on what we know, we assume the solutions are simple. Please also review five questions, in part two of this sub-module. Since this problem is due to an operational or mechanical failure that is caused by a special cause, 1x event, or repeater, the problem fits the criteria, and the five questions, this is a good example of when to apply root cause analysis. Short video on root cause analysis. A full module on this topic is available through Lean Six Sigma Pro's website, www.l6sigmapro.com. Root cause analysis is used to solve problems related to process failures, mechanical failures, and repeaters. Root cause analysis uses brainstorming, fishbone analysis, and 5Y to solve for root cause. Typical day at work, everything runs smoothly until a special cause occurs sending everyone running the aftermath of a special cause the waste is cleared and production returns to normal problem statement from our example on may 6 2014 during c shift excessive jams at the end of the line conveyor on line 3 resulted in 30 minutes of downtime don miller was the operator on hand during the event based on what you have learned does this problem fit the criteria for root cause analysis? Cause, special cause. Check. This is due to a miscapping event from a process failure at the kappa. Factors, one or more. Check. This problem is related to a few factors. How many factors is unknown at this point? It will be determined during the analyze phase using the 5Y tool. Solutions, simple and unknown. Check. This problem is related to more than likely caused by simple causes. However, they are unknown at this point. Based on what we know, this is a good example of when to apply root cause analysis. This concludes this short clip on root cause analysis. If you would like to learn more about root cause analysis, please join us at www.l6sigmapro.com. Just do it. Definition. This is when we go fix the problem at the gamba without initiating a project. We know what caused the problem and how to fix it. When to implement. Route cause, special. Factors, 1. Solutions, simple and known. Project length, N, A. Team size, N, A. Financial savings, varied. Why implement. This is a quick fix that does not require the lengthy process of a project.
It is a one-day fix. Examples Standing water on the floor due to a leaking pipe. Incorrect center line on the conveyor leading to poor transition between belts. Measurement error due to photo eye sensor not being level. This concludes our lecture on four simple questions, selecting the correct problem solving technique. We hope that you have enjoyed this sub-module of the Define phase. Please join us on our website, www.l6sigmapro.com, where we will continue our Lean Six Sigma journey. Hello, and welcome to today's lecture on, 5 Simple Questions, Selecting the Correct Problem Solving Technique, a sub-module of the Define phase, created by Lean Six Sigma Pro a company dedicated to offering high-quality free online Lean Six Sigma training modules. In part 2 of this sub-module, we will discuss 5 questions to ask when selecting which technique to apply to a particular problem. 5 Simple Questions 1. Is this a one-time event? 2. Do we know the cause? 3. Is this problem related to decreasing setup, shutdown, and cleaning times? 4. Is the problem related to common variation in the process or special variation? 5. Is this a complex problem with multiple factors? Variation and defects. If you were to measure any two objects for a physical or chemical attribute you would see that slight differences exist. These differences are called variation. This holds true in the manufacturing environment as well. For example, if the weight of 100 units of product X coming from the same process Y were measured, we will see that slight variations exist between each unit. This variation is acceptable within a certain acceptable tolerance range for the process, the distance between the lower and the upper specification limits. Any units that fall outside of this range is considered to be a defect. In the figures below, we see three units of product X and the distribution plot that depicts the typical bell-shaped curve for process Y. Also, on the distribution plot, we see the tolerance range, which is the distance between the lower specification limits, abbreviated LSL, and the upper specification limits, abbreviated USL. If a unit of product X falls outside of this range on either side of the specification limits it is considered a defect. Of our three units of product X, only one unit satisfies the customer's specifications, also called the customer's expectations, and, therefore is considered acceptable product and not a defect. The other two units fail to satisfy the customer's expectations, and, therefore are considered defects. Common cause variation is variation that is inherent to the process that is random, always present, and affects every process. This type of variation exists as a natural part of the manufacturing process and an assignable cause does not exist. As presented in the previous slide, no two units are exactly alike. Variation exists as a natural part of the process. This variation is inherent, meaning that it happens naturally. Random meaning we can't determine exactly what the unit's characteristics, for example, weight, will be and how they will differ from other units. The other units are called the population or sample, depending on whether we are looking at every unit produced or a subset. And, affects every process. The variation that exists between one unit and another is the result of the synergy of all of the inputs of that process. These inputs are called the X's of the process. A function used in Lean Six Sigma to illustrate this point is called y equals f of x, where y equals the output of the process and x equals the individual inputs and their sum impact on the output, y, of the process. In this short video, we see the y equals f of x function as it relates to a process. Colamax a larger manufacturer of burst color is having an issue with their product codex. In the last three production runs, 25 to 30 percent of the total units produced are defective. Colamax's quality department has investigated the issue. Yet, they have not been successful in identifying the route cause or causes. Colamax has decided to call in an expert. Bob, 
a Lean Six Sigma black belt with Lean Six Sigma Pro to solve the problem. Here we see Bob at the Gamba detailing the inputs and outputs of the process. There are four inputs, or X's, green X1, red X2, yellow X3, and blue X4. The output, Y, is our finished product. Problem, the output, Y, deviates from the reference sample in the defective units due to the missing input, blue X4. In order to solve the problem, Bob will need to identify all of the possible root causes and their impact on the finished units. After he has identified the root cause for the deviation in the input he will be able to apply a solution. Special cause variation, is variation that is not random, not always present, and does not affect every process. It is unnatural variation as signified by an outlier, a point that is plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, and is caused by an assignable cause. It is a one-time event unless the special cause is not eliminated in which case it can show up in the manufacturing process as a repeater. Note, Lean Six Sigma projects should only be conducted on projects that exhibit common cause variation. If you are attempting to solve for special cause we recommend you apply the A3 root cause analysis approach. A module on this topic is located under the LSS Plus tab on the website. So far, we have introduced four types of continuous improvement problem solving techniques, route cause analysis, Kaizen, SMED, and Lean Six Sigma. We have also introduced the Just Do It, which is not a continuous improvement technique. We include it here to help illustrate when to apply this approach. What type of project should Bob implement to solve this problem? Let's review what we know. Problem statement, in the last three production runs, 25 to 30 percent of the units are defective due to the missing input, blue X4. This is a difficult problem but one you are most likely to experience. Therefore, let's eliminate the project types we won't use based on criteria we know about the problem. Series of questions to determine project type. Is this a one-time event? Do we know the cause? Is this problem related to decreasing setup, shutdown, and cleaning times? Is the problem related to common variation in the process or special variation? Is this a complex problem with multiple factors? Question number one, is this a one-time event? Answer, no, it has reoccurred three times in the past three production runs. Question number two, do we know the cause? Answer, no. Therefore, project type, just in time, eliminated. Question number three, is this problem related to decreasing setup, shutdown, and cleaning times? Answer, no, this is process related. Therefore, project type, SMED eliminated. Question number four, is the problem related to common cause variation in the process or special cause variation? Let's review problem, related to common cause, the synergy of all of the inputs influence the output, Y, in the absence of a known cause. It is a problem, because the company is not satisfied with the current process performance in relation to the customer's expectations. Problem, related to special cause, a noticeable change in output, Y, that is caused by one input that is deviating from its common influence due to a known cause. Question number four, is the problem related to common cause variation in the process or special cause variation? Answer. Even though the problem has occurred three times it is due to special cause variation. One input, blue X4 has changed. However, we do not know the cause. This is known as a repeater. A repeater is due to a special cause that has not been corrected. Therefore, it is allowed to continue to occur. As a result, it mimics common cause variation by becoming a normal pattern in the process. Therefore, project type, Lean Six Sigma, eliminated. Project type, Kaizen eliminated. Strategy, implement root cause analysis A3 problem solving technique. Note, as you see, we did not have to ask the fifth question. Had we eliminated all choices except Lean Six Sigma and Kaizen we would then ask the fifth question.
Is this a complex problem with multiple factors? A complex problem with multiple factors will require Lean Six Sigma. It is helpful to think of Kaizen as a mini Lean Six Sigma project. Kaizen is focused on a rapid improvement in a short and focused 3 to 5 day event. Therefore, there is not enough time to focus on a complex problem with multiple factors. In summary of selecting the correct continuous improvement technique to apply to solve a particular business problem we have created a flowchart. Titled, Flowchart, Project Selection. A flowchart is a graphical representation of a process. You can think of it as a path to take to get to a particular activation step. In our flowchart, the activation step is the type of continuous improvement technique to implement. A flowchart consists of four main elements. 1. Termination points, where the process starts or ends. This is represented by an oval shape. 2. Flow line symbol, shows the direction of the path to follow. This is represented by an arrow. 3. Basic processing symbol, this is a processing step, an activity to perform in the path. This is represented by a square shape. 4. Decision point, asks a question to determine which direction to take on the path. This is represented by a diamond shape. 5. Yes or no, tells us which direction to take based on the answer to the decision point. We will practice using this chart. We start at the termination point, titled start. Move down to the first decision point, is the problem due to common cause? We answer, yes. Move to the next decision point on our path, are there multiple complex factors to consider? We answer, yes. This takes us to the process symbol which reads, perform Lean Six Sigma. Now that you know how to use a flowchart, use the flowchart when you are faced with a problem to be solved using a continuous improvement technique. We have reviewed only four continuous improvement techniques plus the just do it. These are just a few of the continuous improvement techniques currently in practice. In our Lean Six Sigma training program, we will add two more to this list. These are, Total Productive Maintenance and Reliability Centered Maintenance. These are advanced modules and will be provided after completing the Lean Six Sigma training modules. This concludes our lecture on five simple questions. Selecting the correct problem solving technique, we hope that you have enjoyed this sub module of the Define phase. Please join us on our website, www.l6sigmapro.com, where we will continue our Lean Six Sigma journey.